guys. So good to see you here this morning. Let's stand to our feet together. Page number 22 in your kid books. Page number 22, Blessed Assurance. We'll sing all three verses, first, second, and last. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Sing it like you mean it this morning. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a see in the house of the Lord today. Hope you've had a good week this week. Thank the Lord for beautiful sunshine that we have. And uh, let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Father, thank you so much today for the privilege that we have to be in the house of the Lord. God, I'm glad for the health and strength that you've given us to be able to come today and to worship you. Lord, I pray today you'll bless the choirs they sing, the special music, the preaching of the word of God. Lord, I pray today that we can truly say when we leave this place, that it has been good to be in the house of God. Lord, we pray for the men in our church that may be battling sickness, those that are dealing with cancer, going through treatments. I pray that, God, you would touch them and be with them in a special way. Lord, I pray for those that will travel throughout this summer. God, you watch over them. I know many will be on vacation, and I pray, God, you'll take care of them. Keep them safe as they go back and forth, bring them home safely. Again, Lord, I thank you today for another day. This is the day you have made, Lord. Lord, help us today to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Thank you again, Father, for the privilege of being in your house today. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, Brother James, going to lead you a couple more verses. You sing that with me. All right, page number 248, My Sins Are Gone. Oh, for a second, I gave her the wrong song there. I'm sorry. Alright, hope you brought your smiles along with you. It's hard to sing. You ask me why I'm happy while you're frowning, so let's see them here. Alright, very good on the first. You ask me why I'm happy, so I'll just tell you why.
Jesus. Amen. 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 All right, you be seated and enjoy the choir.
he's alive, you and I ought to be alive. Amen. Let's all stand together this morning. Tell somebody you're glad to see them today in the house of the Lord. Welcome our visitors that are with us today. We're glad to have them. Hope you got a chance to welcome someone today. It's good to have several folks visiting with us. I couldn't help but to grin back there, and I look around some folks, and uh, anytime we uh, see someone visiting with us and someone is carrying a baby, then we say, boy, you found the right place. Amen. We got the nurseries, and you'll be welcomed. Amen. But anyway, uh, so many children being born, we praise the Lord for that. You go ahead and uh, be seated. I want to give you some announcements. Uh, this week, of course, is Vacation Bible School here at the church. Is that correct this week? Uh, that'll be Monday through Wednesday. So remember that. I'm sure Brother Woolage will have more to say about that tonight. But uh, do remember that if you would. And then next Sunday, July 2nd, we'll be having our God and Country Sunday. Uh, we'll be having Brother uh, Daniel Waters with us and his family. Uh, and also, we will be having a cookout after the morning service. And so that's going to be a, always a big day for us. We do one service on that day. Then we have some singing maybe after. I'll talk to Brother James about that. don't want to dump anything on him. He's not ready for, but uh, maybe I'll sing a song or two. But anyway, uh, we'll have a cookout after morning. Thank you all for your encouragement after the morning service. Uh, please be sure to bring a dessert, Miss Libby said, if you would. We got everything else provided, but if you could bring a dessert, that would be great. And uh, some of that stuff, you know, that's got that, the black cookie crumbs on the top like Oreos and what do you call them things? There you go. But anyway, and whatever else you might want to do, don't bring a hundred of those, but uh, whatever you might want to do, remember that. Also, We've got a big day planned over at Brother Johnny Sherrill's home uh, on July 4th. Uh, Brother Johnny is having a Veterans Memorial dedication to his home. As you know, Brother Johnny is a Vietnam veteran. This is not a little thing. This is a pretty good sized thing that's going to be done. It's going to start at 10 o'clock. We encourage you to bring a chair. Uh, Brother Crabtree's involved in it. Brother David Stroud's involved in it. The Parquet family, myself. Um, Others are involved in it, um, and also there may be a few special things, and I won't mention those because a couple of those may not be 
set in stone, but uh, it's going to be a really great day. So if you're in town on July 4th and you need, uh, want to come by there, and Brother Johnny, can they get your address that we have on the board or we can on, on that, on the page in the back. So I promise you, you'll enjoy it. Brother Johnny, there are going to be quite a few veterans that you know from that you serve with, right? Amen. Wonderful. So let's honor them, uh, and uh, we'll have a good time over there. So remember that. And then another big event is July the 8th, and that is going to be Brother Doug and Miss Heather's wedding. That'll be July 8th at 1.30, and it will be in the uh, old sanctuary. So remember that. Am I right about that, Brother Doug? And so remember that, if you would. Uh, there is a bridal shower table for Miss Heather uh, Friday, June 30th, uh, 630 to 830. It is a floating shower. Come any time during that time. Refreshments will be served. And uh, Heather and Doug are registered at Amazon. And also, uh, Lowe's gift cards will be appreciated. So if you would remember that, uh, we'd appreciate it. Young people, camp will be here before we know it. End of July, we'll say more about that. Today, we have adult choir practice. That'll be at 445 today. And so don't forget, uh, if you're in the choir, I noticed several of you came in the service today. Sometimes you sing in the choir. So if you want to get back up there and help, be great. Appreciate the good choir singing this morning. Didn't you think it was good this morning? And that helps, and I appreciate uh, the choir. So they'll be practicing today at 445. If you know of someone that is working in our super churches, we have several choir members that are not in here this morning that are up in the super church. If you could get word to them, if you see them, and let them know uh, that we would we would uh, greatly appreciate that. So remember that, and uh, don't forget again next Sunday, God and Country Sunday, uh, and we do look forward to that. Uh, Brother Ron Christie, who's been coming to Calvary for a long time, Brother Ron sitting back our second row from the back, been coming to Calvary a long time. Is today is his last Sunday? He is going to be moving to Florida. Am I right, Brother Ron? What part of Florida? Madison, Florida, over towards the Gulf. It rained too much here for you. Is that why you're leaving? It's raining there too. It is. Uh, I got to be headed to the Panhandle this week, a couple of days, and it is. It's raining everywhere. That was not now though. But anyway, be sure to speak to Brother Ron. He's been faithful coming here for a good long time, and uh, and uh, we're going to miss him. But do be much in prayer uh, for him as he travels. I'm going to give you just a tad bit of an update on our building this morning. Uh, just these are some things that are kind of uh, a tad bit of information to you. Uh, as you know, the city wanted several more things done, and we told them that we would do those if they were necessary. Now they also want some paving done instead of rock because of the beautification of this beautiful area of Statesville. And so uh, they're wanting to do that as well. Uh, one good thing we did here this week is the company that's going to be putting all the houses in at the end of this road. I think there's, I don't know how many, I'm not going to say, I'd be, I'd evangelistically say 300, there may be more or less. And a lot of you are cutting your eyes at James to see, I don't even know if he knows. But anyway, how many? Praise the Lord. But anyway, uh, there'll be about 300 homes. Uh, they have signed a contract with the city that they are going to do the road through here. And so that is their responsibility. Now, we may or may not get out of this, but if we get out of having to do the sidewalks, curbings, all the stuff we do that they're going to tear up in a couple years, then it's going to save us a lot of money. But that's all up to the city. It's not in our hands. We don't control that. So anyway... Right now, without the paving, we're bumping $800,000 on this project. 200 of it's tied up with what they want out front on the road and drainage systems and all. So if we don't have to do that, hallelujah, that's going to be uh, wonderful. So pray about that, that God will give us favor. And our engineers working really hard trying to help us with that. We do have permits already. 
So there are going to be bulldozers and all that start rolling. I'm hoping yesterday. But uh, we're talking to Marty. They'll get ready to get going. We've got to talk to Brother Woolage. But we've got to start out with the drainage areas and all the stuff we'll be doing, getting that ready. If you saw the picture of the building that I placed, it's going to pretty much be pretty close to that. The only exception will be uh, that picture is a little longer than it will be. It'll be about 125 long, not 170. Then you'll have the addition on the end as well. And, uh, but anyway, uh, that's pretty much what it's going to look like. We have the money to pay cash for all of it, all right? We, you have given through Project Nehemiah. While that's going on, we're going to start in here pretty soon. Brother James is doing a design for this. Don't talk much about what's going on in here, all right? What I mean by that is don't go out and tell people, man, y'all ought to see all the works being done. Just kind of be. Hallelujah, all right? But anyway, uh, we'll be getting all that done and getting everything taken care of. There's a lot we don't have to permit for this, so it'll move much faster. So anyway, things are going to get going on that. Thank you for giving to that. I wanted to give you an update. Thank you, Brother James, for the hard work and all us involved. And um, Lord willing, we'll get a couple of loopholes here. It could save us a lot, so pray about that. But that's worst-case scenario, so just to let you know that, all right? So it's going to be beautiful. And actually, then I'm going to go into another thing because I want us to brick this whole side and I want it fixed to match the other building on, when you're looking at it from the road. So we'll just raise the money and do what we got to do so we can do that as well. Then I want a steeple in the middle and we'll move maybe one from there or add another. I don't know. And if somebody's sentimental about that steeple, we may give it to you and let you take it home. But either way, we'll put one in the middle We'll do what we can with that. But once you begin later on to look at this facility, it's going to look totally different than what you so. And the Lord willing is going to let us pay for every single bit of it. I want to go into it debt free. It's been my burden. To do that, we may have to give some more for some of the brick, some of the things we do. If we do, I'll be the first one to help do that. All right? Brother James said he'd give 100000 And so... That is what you said, I thought. Oh, you save. Oh, thank you, Brother James, for your, for your, for your giving heart. Amen. But anyway, uh, we're looking forward to all that getting done. Thank you for your patience with this. It's been a process. I think if you know, if you're dealing with city and county, both, it is a process. And they have a lot of things you just have to get done. So we are there, all right? So you may come in next week and see dirt moving. We're there. So we're getting ready to build this building. Amen? So praise the Lord for that. And uh, we thank the Lord that uh, finally we're getting real close, all right? And so we thank the Lord for that. Did Brother James look like I was telling it right? Did y'all look at him? Did you, was I doing pretty good? Was there a part I wasn't doing good? That's what you told me. I'm just kidding. I know. All right. Praise God, that's all them announcements. We need a song. Amen. I am going to have Project Nehemiah come off the wall in the back when we remodel this. We're going to, I got some other ideas, some things we want to do, so that's going to be coming off of there. But we're going to have Project Brick the Front for long. Amen.
quickly while Brother Brian's speaking to his wife back here and get ready to do this song for me. He sung this song down uh, in um, Troy, North Carolina, and um, I, I just really enjoy the song. It speaks to your heart, and uh, I want him to do this song for you. I think it'll be a blessing this morning, and uh, while Miss Sandy and others are praying over here, continue to pray for Brother Larry. He's home watching today. I'm glad he's home and uh, going through all these treatments, but do if you would, be much in prayer uh, for him and uh, that God will continue to touch him. We need a miracle for him. God's able to do those. Amen. I want you to enjoy this song. Listen to the words of it and be thankful for what the song is saying to you. And I, I think you'll be blessed by it. Right. step I take forward, the past tries to follow, reminding me of what I have been. Mistakes and transgressions, those unlearned lessons I've gone through time and again. I know God can't recall what he's cast in the sea. That's easy for him, but so hard for me. the past with him but the guilt reminds me to look behind me my regrets want me to spend time with them but when I stand in his presence in our brand new home every memory of failure and sin will be
I'll stop you. We're not going through the whole thing. Sing those words of that second verse again. Listen. Listen to this. Second verse. I know he saved me. I know he forgave me. The past is the past with him. Just keep going. I'm enjoying it. But the guilt reminds me to look behind me. My regrets want me to spend time with them. Stop now. Do that again. We're not trying to sing eight words ten times, but this ought to remind us. We're all sitting here today because of the grace of God, the goodness of the Lord. Sometimes the devil tries to pull up her past. But the good news is, is God has forgotten all that. Matter of fact, if you sinned yesterday and you ask God to forgive you, it's gone. God forgives. I was preaching this week. It was an unusual meeting, one of the best revival meetings I've been in a long time. And during the service, there was a gentleman who wanted to talk to me after the service. He said, Preacher, I've heard you on media stuff several times. But he said, I never met you. He said, I was going through a dark, deep depression in my life. I was going through a hard time and I didn't know God. And he said, my mom gave me a CD of you preaching a message on the benefit of spiritual battles. And he said, I gave my life to Christ. God turned my world around. He said, I want to come meet you tonight. But he said, also, I want you to know God's called me to preach and I'm an evangelist. About a lot of part of the week, Brother Brian, a gentleman stood up to testify on the back row. He said, Preacher, way back at Turner's Creek Baptist Church, years ago, I was a young man. You didn't know me. He said, but God changed my life in a service. He said, after service ended that night, he said, I gave my life to Christ. He said, I knew you were going to be here this week, and I wanted to come thank you for preaching the gospel to me. Now, I want you to listen. I'm not talking about what I did because anyone could have preached the gospel. So don't get lost in that part. But those men knew that God had so much changed their lives that they wanted to come and let me know that we're not the same that we once were. Can I tell you this? No religion, no formalism of this world can do that. Only Christ can change your life and make you a new creature. Only Christ can take you from no hope to plenty of hope. Only Christ can do all of that. What I'm afraid of, though, I'm afraid that we quit telling the story of what Jesus did for us, how he changed our life. The passage of the Word of God that I'm in today, if I get to it, I don't know, but that I'm in today. It's those three lost things of Luke 15. And you know why Jesus gave those parables of lost things? Because Pharisees and Sadducees, religious people, criticized Jesus for loving sinners. But you know what I am glad of today? I'm glad that Jesus, Brother Brian, I'm glad that Jesus loves sinners. I'm glad of that because I am one. I'm saved one, but I'm still a sinner. But when I was lost without God, He loved me. You walked in this building today. You say, Preacher, you don't know my past. You don't know where I come from. You don't know the things I've done. I know that one drop of his precious blood can wash all your sin away. And then this can be your story. Just sing the whole second verse and all of it that goes with it. I know he 
saved me. I know he forgave me. The past is the past with him. But the guilt reminds me to look behind me. My regrets want me to spend time with them. But when I stand in his presence and he says, welcome home, every memory of failure and sin will be gone. And there'll come a day when I see him in glory and I'll only recall Calvary's side of my story where my sin salvation was born. Oh, what a moment when I can remember everything he forgot. Oh, and there'll come a day when I see Take your Bible. These are praying you know, all the time they want to. We don't put God in a box at Calvary. She turned to Luke chapter number 15. Victoria, how glad are you that God doesn't throw us away when we fail? You never imagine what your life could be. I'm trying to get off of this. Y'all just pray for me. You never imagine what your life could be. See, you don't, you don't, you got me here, Brother Bob. You don't see down the road. I've been your pastor since you was a little girl. You didn't see them three babies and this one coming. This young man standing here singing today. Because the devil doesn't show us that. I think you're going to know the song I want you to sing here in a minute. We're not a church that thinks music it's all we need in church. Y'all know that. I'm a preacher. But I got enough sense to know that I can't just walk in the presence of God for two weeks of my life like I've been doing and preaching and come in here and just shut it off. It's refreshing to me sometimes to go in places that don't have what you have at Calvary, but they're hungry. And I wish sometimes this church would realize how good God has been to us, how He's blessed us in our lives, and we would worship Him like we really ought to. Brother Crabtree, you look at your life now in your early 60s of your life. You never dreamed when you walked into that storefront building. A deacon in a Presbyterian church lost. That you'd be sitting here and we get to do this together for as long as we have.
Brother Kevin, when your life was junk, you shared with me last Sunday, three years ago, God spared your life through COVID when they said you weren't going to make it. But God spared your life a long time before that. I think sometimes children of God forget how many times the Lord has picked you back up when you fail. Most churches are made up of repeat failures. You know what I'm talking about? What I'm talking about is we didn't walk in here perfect. We didn't hang any halos and wings in our heart in the foyer. We all have struggles. But we are so thankful that God doesn't throw the clay away. We're so glad that God doesn't give up. Because see, He sees way down the road. Brother Grayson, God would love to discourage you and throw you out of the midst. He, the, I say God, the devil. The devil would have loved just to discourage you and push you out of the midst. He, he would have loved for you never make it to graduation or go to Pensacola or wherever God leads. He'd love to just mess you up. But he failed. He failed. Miss Victoria did this song for me a long time ago. We're going to get her a mic to her here, Brother James. I want to dedicate this little song here to every Christian that has ever come up short and feel like that God might have thrown in the towel on you or could you ever be what God wants you to be. He sees the ending he knows what you could be. He's forgotten if you've asked him to. I tell people all the time, we beat ourselves up over more than God beats us up. You listen to the words in the song, we'll see where we go from here. But I believe it'll help you. You listen to being sung by a blessed young lady that God's been awful good to. Sometimes I sit and think about the wrongs I've done. So many I can't begin to tell. The hurt, the pain that I have. Surely fall, and I did. Ever-
so forever in heaven I will be Jesus how could you have loved me so when in sin I sank so Victoria, thank you, Brother Brian. Luke chapter 15, I'm aware of the time, but I do want to share a few things with you this morning. Luke chapter number 15. Luke chapter number 15 is about lost things. Lost things. Uh, last week, I started the message in Luke 15. As I started that message in Luke 15, we talked about the lost sheep. And we got to the place where that sheep was gone, no pasture, no place, no peace, no protection. And yet, the Bible tells us that that wasn't the end of the story. If you look in chapter number 15 of this great chapter, you'll find in verse number 4, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. I don't have time this morning to go into the statement, leave the 99 in the wilderness. That does not mean the shepherd just threw them out and didn't care about them. It has nothing to do with that. But I want you to look at chapter 15, verse 1. Here's why this chapter exists. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. And so this is the reply of the Lord to those that believe that publicans and sinners are not worthy of the love of God. They had the idea that the only one worthy of that was a scribe or a Pharisee, or a religious person. So the Bible says that one of those sheep went astray. Now, I realize in Luke's gospel, it says one was lost. You'll find in Matthew's gospel, it says the sheep went astray. The same parable. Isaiah 53, 6 puts you and I there when it says all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. I believe the gear switches here. No doubt this passage of the Word of God no doubt can deal with those that are Christians that's got away from the Lord. But I believe literally what Christ is dealing with here is people that are lost, undone, without God here in this portion of the parable. And he's dealing with that to let them see uh, that Jesus loves sinners no matter where they are. You think about this passage of the Word of God, you'll find out, first of all, Jesus deals with the wandering. The wandering. Matter of fact, if you'll look at the Word in this, and I, it, these things jumped at me as I was studying them even again last week and again this week, looking over them this morning in my office. And uh, as you look at these, you will find where it says, What man of you having a hundred sheep if he lose one of them? 
That word, lose one, if he loses one of them. In other words, Jesus is not willing that any should perish. Remember, he's dealing with the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but he's also dealing with publicans and sinners that don't believe everybody ought to have a chance to go to heaven. And he's dealing with that. But watch what he does. He calls them, he calls in a, one that is lost if he lose one of them. I looked up this word, it's interesting, the same word you deal with with going astray in Matthew. And what it means is, is to go further and further away. Further and further away. You say, preacher, what does it mean? Further and further away. It's just like the world today that you and I are in. People are getting farther and farther and farther away from God. People have journeyed away from the Lord. You know it as well as I do. People today are harder to reach than they were at one time. Why is that? They've got farther and farther and farther away from God. Second of all, I want you to notice the word astray or lose also carries the idea of being wrong, of being wrong. In other words, when you stray, you have gone the wrong way. When you stray, you're going the wrong direction. Uh, they are lost because they're not going to the shepherd, but they're going away from him, and they're lost. And friend, if you're here today and you're not saved, you are going the wrong direction. You are going the wrong way. Understand that. Amen. Amen. Listen, I believe with all my heart, you also get another idea from Matthew's dealing with the word astray to Luke dealing with the word lost. He's also talking about those that have been wrecked. That have been wrecked. That which is lost in loose gospel means to destroy. In other words, the idea of what's going to happen here is the sheep is going to get away from God. It's going to pull away from the things of God. It's not interested in things of God. And what's going to happen is it's going to be destroyed. And let me just say this to you today, and I want you to get a hold of this. I want you to understand today that, listen, without a shadow of a doubt, sin destroys lives if you go the wrong direction and you wander away from the things of God. Then there's one more. And this was just the introduction of what I was going to preach today, but I think the introduction will be sufficient. There's one more thing that this word lost or lose or astray means. And I thought this was very powerful. It means worthless. Worthless. That does not mean worthless to God. But it means the devil has a desire to make us worthless and to waste our lives and to never be saved or never be what God wants us to be. The word actually means to render useless. What I mean by that, let's bring it down into terms. You cannot shear a lost sheep. Do you know what it means? It simply means this. If that sheep is lost and gone, God can't get his hands on it, can't protect it, can't shear it, can't nurture it, can't take care of it. When the sheep is gone, it's gone. I want you to listen to me today. When you think about the lost things of Luke 15, there's a lot of preaching to be done about us wandering away from the fold, and I do believe it needs to be preached. But you've got to remember the whole idea of these three parts of being lost that Jesus deals with is to a question or is to an attitude of Pharisees and Sadducees. And that attitude is this. Why, if you are the Son of God, would you care about somebody like that. That's what it's about. And Seth is going to come to the piano, and Brother James is going to get an invitation song for us.
Brother James, you, and you don't have time for this morning, but in our song book, I think it'll be in there, I wandered far away from home, away from God, and now I'm coming home. I'm going to use that a little bit more, but um, I want to ask you a question today. Do you know you're saved? What this service has kind of been about. Do you know that you're saved? Do you know Christ is your Savior? If not, here's what's going to happen. You're going to wonder. You're going to wreck. You're going to get farther and farther away. You're going to get to the place where you're going to be going the wrong direction. I read a story some time ago of the rain kind of like we had, especially in our mountains last week, it created some big floods. And the gentleman was standing in the middle of the road and pouring down rain. His cars were coming. He was screaming and hollering in for stop. Some of the drivers were getting angry because he was impeding their progress. But what those drivers did not know is that rain had taken a bridge out. And they will surely experience instant death if they were to go past the man crying stop. And so he was trying to stop them so that they would not end up in the river 60 miles an hour. This morning I believe it is my responsibility to stand in the road and to tell you stop. You don't want to go. You don't want to go the direction that you're heading it will wreck your life. Satan will never do anything good for you. But God will. I can't wait till I get to the second part of this message because the second part's about the rescue. There is something huge about the way Jesus carried that lamb you don't want to miss. Something huge about the way he carried it. But I wonder today, sitting here in this auditorium, if you were to die today, do you know you'd go to heaven? Do you know Christ is your Savior? Would you stand to your feet with your heads bowed this morning? Boy, we have enjoyed. Thank you, Brother Brian. Thank you, Miss Victoria. We have enjoyed the presence of God from Christ anointed singing from a young couple that lives this life for God, has a heart for it, has a heart for you. With our heads bowed this morning and every eye closed, I want to ask you a question. Are you saved? If you would close your eyes in death today, God forbid that would happen, but it could to any of us, right? If you were to close your eyes today, do you know you go to heaven? Do you have that assurance? Do you have that peace? If you do not today, you say, Preacher, I do not have that peace. Preacher, you may not even know my name, but you can remember my face. If you're here today and you say, I do not have that peace of heaven, I'm not sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. Would you pray for me? Would you do me a favor right now? Every head's bowed in this auditorium, folks are praying. Would you do me a favor right now? If you don't have that peace, would you say, Preacher, I don't have that. I don't have that. 
would you pray for me? Would you slip your hand up? You put it right back down. I'm getting ready to pray. I would love to pray for you. Would you do it right now in this auditorium? I do not have that peace. Would you pray for me? Thank you. You can put it down. I do not have that peace. Thank you, ma'am. I can see God tugging at your heart. Thank you for being honest. Someone else today, I do not have that peace. That I go to heaven, would you pray for me? I do not have that peace. Father, in Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Christ over anyone that raised their hand in this auditorium that does not have the assurance of heaven. Jesus, you died for them. Lord, if you could get me out of the way and these people out of the way, and Lord, if just the Holy Ghost of God could make that real this morning, we'll give you praise for it. I wonder this morning why our heads are bowed, and I wish you would do that with me if I ask you to bow your head and pray. I wonder why our heads are bowed this morning. I wonder how many children of God you think about those Pharisees and Sadducees and people that may have thought that you would have never amounted to nothing, but God saved you anyway. I wonder this morning, while I'm talking to folks that need Christ, if you like to simply come to this altar and thank him for saving you, changing your life. Just if God were to so burden you about where God brought you from. Ma'am, you slipped up your hand today. You said you're not sure. Could I get my wife, one of these ladies or the lady you're standing beside of, to take a Bible and show you how you can be sure? Would you be willing to let us pray with you? Praise the Lord. Miss Julie, did you get your Bible? Miss Wendy, would you join Miss Julie up here? Ma'am, thank you so much. I appreciate God doing your heart this whole service. I'm glad Jesus loves us, aren't you? Brother Jamie, would you come here a minute? Lena, you got somebody hold your, you, you, somebody usually has your baby. I see y'all different ones have it sometimes. Miss Victoria, Brother Brian, cut my mic off if you would.
you glad of that today? That's worth coming, ain't it? That's worth everything we do. That's worth <laughs> close to a million dollars for new buildings, right? If one more soul. If we reach one kid in this new gym or one thing through the ministers we'll do, it'll be worth every dollar. Won't it, Brother Ryan? Just one. I'm glad Megan got saved. Instead of getting her to come here, she's going to be standing with Miss Julie. Some of you ladies ought to go by her and tell her she made a wonderful decision for Christ today. Amen. All right. Thank you, Miss Heather, Brother James. Well, I appreciate the Lord being with us today. I want you to pray for me. I'm in a little decision mode today, um, and I need you to pray for me. I've got to be um, in Valdosta, Georgia, tomorrow night for a youth meeting, which is seven and a half hours away. Um, I looked at a plane flight, and it was 931 bucks. I ain't doing that. I don't want to do it anyway. But anyway... Um, I'm going to decide whether I'm going to leave after service tonight or whether I'm going to leave in the morning and drive seven and a half hours. So then i got to preach Tuesday morning and drive seven and a half hours back to be here for Wednesday. All right, and that's where I'm going to be. But pray for me, Lord, to give me wisdom, make the right decision. I, I may go halfway after church tonight and then go the rest of the way. Just pray for me, Lord, to give me some wisdom. I appreciate how God's allowed me to preach, but I told my wife, I'm getting a little tired in the last few weeks. I've been in churches that are really, really good churches preaching, but they preach you to death. They don't want you to stop. They're not like you folks. They don't look at their watch sometimes because <laughs> you're spoiled. No, I'm kidding. But anyway, let, let me say this real quick. Tonight, after our service here, we have 19 people going to be visiting with us tonight. Uh, 13 teenagers and six workers from Troy, North Carolina. They are coming through here as they've done the last two years from Trinity Baptist Church, and they are going to be staying in our facility overnight headed to camp. But last year we did this, and we all had such a great time. We're going to take them, Brother Brian's going to take them, uh, out for pizza tonight at Village Inn, and we want our teenagers to go as well. We will pay for it all. But for our teens tonight, as well as their teens, we'll be going to Village Inn Pizza after service tonight, uh, and we'll be uh, going to do that. And so uh, be sure to get your young people here to go. Choir 445, don't forget that. When you go by the building and you're driving right where a sidewalk might could be, say, Lord, if it be not, let it pass from us. All right, we'll let this company do that. You're not, God, God could give us favor, and we're praying that God will give us favor. Amen. Miss Julie, is that one of the first people you've ever been to get on? I was thinking about that. A lot of you don't know, but Miss Julie come out, and this is not a bad, I'm not being mean, but she come out of a Lutheran ministry where this is not the norm. And they joined this church, got, got saved right with the Lord. But anyway, this young lady, I guess, is the first person that Miss Julie's ever got down on the altar with, took a Bible, and got to lead her to Christ. That's as good, but not as good as you can say because you're going to go to heaven, but it ain't far from it. Praise God. Isn't that great? Brother Brian, anything you need to mention? Will that cover tonight? We'll be good with that. Thank you guys for singing. Both of you are spot on. How many of you love good singing Brother Brian did for us today? I love that second song, man. I'm telling you. I, just, I like them both. Uh, but I tell you, that second song really spoke to my heart some time ago. Be sure to tell somebody you're glad to see them. Um, be back with us tonight, and uh, we'll look forward to service tonight. I will either continue tonight on, on the going to get the sheep, and there's some good stuff in that, Lord have mercy, or I may preach to parents tonight. I hadn't decided. So one of the two. And then I'll make my decision about whether I'm going to hit the road, Jack, or Brother Hunter's going to drive me in the morning. Amen. We'll just, what do you call that stuff? We'll drift down there. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, Lord, I want to thank you for this precious lady giving her life to Christ today. 
God, you're a life changer. God, you're the really only one that can change anybody's life. So I want to thank you today for that. Thank you that Miss Julie got the chance to take her Bible <laughs> and to show someone Christ. Thank you for the hard work of Brother James and all the ones that have been fighting for us to get this building going. And Lord, when we start moving some dirt, we'll rejoice and praise you for the needs you've met so we could do it. Thank you for these young ladies. And sometimes go, I don't, God, I don't know where they're at in the service. I don't know if they get it. I don't know. I just don't know sometimes. But God, I know that you died for them. And I want them to go to heaven. God, make it easy for them to realize that Jesus loves them. Bless our visitors today. Thank you for them. Give us a good afternoon. Let us enjoy the beautiful sunshine. And then, Lord, be back in your house tonight. We ask it all in Christ's name and all God's people said, amen. amen. God bless you. We'll see you this evening.